Okay. I'm going to start with a quick review. This stuff is so important. We've been away from it for a few days. Um, somebody turned in away from work over this and missed a bunch. So I thought, well, hey, let's take a quick look at it. Okay. So when I graph in, I knew that we're finding a value. The directions say evaluate. So when you see seven pi over four, okay, we got the pi over fours, right? And we know that the point at the pi over fours is root two over two, root two over two. This is a cosine, so that will be the x coordinate. But where is seven pi over four? Seven pi over four is down here, right? So in quadrant four, your SIGNs are positive negative, cosine is x. So will everybody agree this one is perfect. All right, pi over three. You know your points here, there's the pi over three. That one is one half, root three over two. This is a sine problem, sine is y. So I know it's either root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. Where is negative 2 pi over 3? Right here. So the answer is going to be negative root 3 over 2. Tangent. Whoops, what's tangent? Tangent is y over x. Where's pi over 2? That's not one of my specials here. Where's pi over 2? It's really special, this right there. And that's the point zero, 01. So if we put y over x, we are undefined. There's another special, special. Pi, that's over here. Negative one, zero. Cosine is x, negative one. over 4, which means it's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and when I make the tangent, put y over x, it's going to be 1 or negative 1, right? Okay, so let's got to figure out which quadrant that's in. So 13 fourths is 3 and a fourth. But because sines and cosines are periodic, we can get rid of two of these, because two pi is a revolution. So really, this is just five pi over four, one and a fourth. And where's five pi over four? Quadrant three. And if I put y over x in quadrant three, it will be positive. Right? Oh my goodness, 787, 6. I got 131 and a 6. Pi. So what can I get rid of? I do not want to deal with that. I can get rid of how much? 130. Remember, a revolution is 2 pi. So you can get rid of evens. So this is the same as the sine of 1 and a 6 or 7, 6. So here we are. Here's a 6 right here. I know that point is. 3 over 2, 1 half, but 7, 6 is down here. So the 1 half, which is a sign, will be negative. Okay, we okay with that? No mm -hmm. All right, now I want to look at a couple of problems, or one problem, in your 3, 4, 3, 5 homework. So if you would not have your 3, 4, 3, 5 homework,
So in this problem, you are told to have a maximum here, and a minimum here, and you're supposed to come up with the period, frequency, midline, and amplitude. Okay, so this is a max and this is a min. So won't the midline be right in the middle? So our midline is y equals zero. We everyone agree with that? Now, if that's the midline and this is the maximum, then doesn't the amplitude have to be three? Don't let me get away with something here if you have a question. That, that's okay? That part's okay? All right? Now, we know that max to min, max to min is half the period, right? So we got to get from negative 8 pi over 7, or negative 8 pi over 14, to negative 3 pi over 14. I have to compare these two numbers, so I'm getting a common denominator. So a half a period is how much? 5 pi over 14, which means the whole period is twice that, which is 5 pi over 7. So our period is 5 pi over 7, which makes our frequency 7 over 5 pi. Now, some of you have turned that paper in already. You got it figured out now? Yeah. And those of you that haven't turned it in yet, you got it here? Okay. All right. That's all I want to do on that if you, you need a chance to try that. Okay. All right, so you can set that aside, get your notes back out, and together we are going to do a little bit of this card sort, and that will give you the rest of the period to work on it with your card system, okay? Now, what this card sort thing is, you've got, what, a bunch of graphs, a page of graphs, and then you've got a page of equations, and then you got a page where you're supposed to match it up, okay? So we're going to do the first one together. So look at your first graph, graph A, and we are going to write the equation of graph A. We'll write an equation, and hopefully the one we write will be able to match up. If not, we'll have to come back and write another one. Remember, there are infinitely many equations for every graph. Okay, so when you look at graph A, first one in the card store, what do you notice about that? It's a sine curve. If there's no shift, it's a sine curve. And it's been lifted up one. And it has a period of... which means it has a 2x, an amplitude of 1. Would everybody agree that is a possible equation? All right, let's see if it matches. Do we have an equation that looks like that? We do. Equation 11. Would everybody agree? So you got how that works? Okay, now let's do one the other direction in case you choose to do that. Look at your equations. Number one in the equations is 3 sine x plus 2. Now when you look at your equation or your graphs to match this, what are you going to be 
be looking for. It's going to be listed to. It does not have a phase shift. I mean, yeah, it does have a phase shift. It does have a period change. But it does have an amplitude of three. So it's going to have to go all the way up to five and all the way down to negative two. So you should be looking for a graph that looks like this. And we have a sketch that looks like that. as much of this done as you can. Talk about it. Help each other. <laughs> <laughs>